Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Tuesday, February 20th at 11.47 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. What I have up on the screen is the sea ice thickness coming from the Danish Meteorological Institute for yesterday. And I want to quick point out that since last month, they've added an entire section to the legend increasing the thickness in the Arctic sea ice up to five meters. And that's because it doesn't usually get that thick. And now the Arctic ice is over five meters thick in many areas, including the center of the Arctic Ocean. And you can clearly see here, Arctic sea ice volume is pushing itself into the 2004-2013 mean and is far exceeding 2017 and 2016 levels. So the Arctic sea ice volume is greater when the sea ice extent is smaller because it's compressing the ice into the center of the Arctic. So that's how they obfuscate from the truth. You're looking at the truth. There's over five meters of ice within all of these regions here. I don't know how if you know how thick that is, but that's very thick for Arctic sea ice, 15, <laughs> 15 foot thick. You can't put a ship through it. Not even close. I'll leave you links to all of these goodies. Down in the bottom left under the video here, it says show more in gray. Click on it and you'll get a link to this article. Cold snap brings record low temperatures to San Diego County. The National Weather Service has issued a frost advisory due to the ongoing frigid conditions. Maybe that's also due to the fact that it's below zero. <laughs> San Diego County, a cold snap that settled over Southern California over the weekend delivered a few record cold temperatures in the San Diego area Tuesday. Extra cold winter conditions led to the readings of 23 degrees in Ramona, replacing the former low of 26 set back in 2006 and 29 degrees in Vista, which was down from the former 20 milestone of 30 uh, February 20th milestone of 33 degrees established back in 1971. In Oceanside, they broke the record set back in 45. So we have many records in Southern California being broken, and we're not subscribing. But that's frost. And that's after record-setting cold blankets the Bay Area. They might warm up. But icy Canadian winds delivered record lows to several Bay Area spots. The storm blast pushing south from Canada is expected to kick up high winds late Wednesday through Thursday as well. The forecast calls for low in the upper 30s overnight with daytime highs reaching in the 50s. So the San Francisco airport reported 36 degrees, which broke the record in 2011, which was 37. Oakland was 30, broke the 34 degree record in 2006. Salinas, 28, ties the record from 1953. San Rafael, 32, ties the mark from 2006. Half Moon Bay, 36, ties the, beats the 32 in 2013, and on and on. So it's just not a few places. <laughs> it seems to be a lot of record-breaking temperatures in ca uh, California. Utah snowstorm snarls commute with hundreds of crashes, sparks power outages, and piles of powder at the ski resorts. That's a lot of peas. But it's not prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance, I assure you. But after a day of full snow, Monday divers brave poor roads. Monday drivers brave poor road conditions, causing more than 200 crashes along the Wasatch Front. Tuesday is projected to bring more of the same. More crashes Tuesday projected. Oh, that's funny. Apparently, they, those Mormons don't know how to drive. Can you hear the Tyvek whipping on the outside? Shivering, Denver heads towards century-old cold weather record Tuesday. Denver's high temperature on Tuesday reached a frigid 13, <laughs> making the mark a record low maximum temperature for the date going back and breaking a centennial record 
all the way back to the centennial minimum. Freezing cold weather in Denver is set to topple a century-old record today as bundled up and shivering locals shoveled snow from sidewalks. Denver's high temperature on Tuesday reached a frigid 13, making the mark a record low temperature for the date going way back to 1911, according to the National Weather Service. Other deep freeze areas in northeast Colorado on Tuesday included Firestone, where the temperatures dropped to minus 11, and Agate, which dropped to minus 10. And that's a minus boom. <laughs> Throw that in there. Heads up, Jimmy. Record February warmth to snow. A wild ride ahead for Boston. If there's any word for winter 2718, it's grand solar minimum. I mean variable. But we never really have gotten stuck in a pattern for too long and have seen everything from the mild to the wild. Heads up. Arctic ice in Boston to record warmth. Crop failure much? Well, the same thing's going to be happening this week. It's going to go from record warm to snow. And the problem with that is a lot of the trees in these areas, especially the fruit blossoms, are already pushing out. They're going to be frozen. And we're going to be looking at epic crop losses this spring. I'm just giving you a heads up for things to come and how it unfolds. This is coming from Billings, Montana. February stacking up to be the snowiest on record. Snowiest on record. They don't look too happy about it down there. If February has seemed particularly backbreaking, it's because Billings hasn't seen this much snow by the 18th of the month ever. We have to answer a question to go further? <laughs> As of Sunday night, at least 31.5 inches of snow has fallen during the month. That's a few inches short of the February record of 37, and we still have 10 days left of the month. That February wasn't ancient history either. It was just back in 2014, showing a clear increase in North American snow events as we move forward. If you don't see a pattern developing, it's because you're not listening or you're not looking for one, and you want to be correct. When all you have to do is seek out the data to find out what's happening. We're reporting on it. Arctic air floods into British Columbia. Record lows and snow likely. Tuesday, February 20th, BC South Coast is in for several days of record cold Arctic air as it floods into the region. Freezing levels will remain at 500 meters or below with temperatures in the minus single digits across the lower Midland over the next few days. That's a heads up, BC. Look at these numbers. Here's the record cold Tuesday morning. Minus 32.9 in Burns Lake. We'll beat the 1957 record. Blue River, minus 31.2. So we have some cold conditions where it's typically not this cold. And I was looking at the GFS models, and it does not look good going into the first few weeks of March especially with the split polar vortex. Heads up, Norway, you're looking to be crushed with record low temperatures. Justification for all your misery, Calgary is in line to break the snowfall record. If Calgary gets just seven more centimeters of snow in February, which we still have 10 days left, it will break its record amount for the month dating back 121 years. I can't even count the amount of records we're talking about in the last few weeks, but Calgarians, there might be a silver lining to the snowy February. Heck, it might even become the gold standard. If you're keeping track, and really who isn't, up until February 19th, the city has been hit with 42.6 centimeters of snow. The normal amount for the first 19 days of the month is simply only 10.1. So they've quadrupled the average, and they're blowing it out of the water. So expect Calgary to break the snowfall record. And there, we just said it, so that means it's going to happen. Let's talk about Norway. Heavy snowfall this winter continues to set new records in the hills around Oslo and throughout southern Norway. Jadkaj Svenska? At the same time, it's prompting warnings against overexertion. 
when it needs to be shoveled away from both driveways and rooftops so you don't get crushed to death and you can stay warm in your little hut. There's been at least 80 centimeters at low elevations this winter and with a meter at higher, and with more than a meter at higher elevations with the hills around the suburbs of Birum, for example, reporting 120 centimeters of snow on the ground. <coughs> so this is pushing back uh, to record levels uh, back into the 1960s. And it doesn't look good for the next six weeks in Norway, according to the GFS models. A powerful eruption reported on yesterday, Cinnabung, the largest eruption in the last year, completely annihilated uh, the top of the crater. There's more of the pictures of the children running. I'll leave you links to the article here. But what you're going to see is that this whole portion of the volcano the top of Cinnabon volcano is missing. <laughs> and that's on everybody's car. And half of it is up in the upper stratosphere, which is blocking out the sun, raising the albedo effect, which doesn't need to be raised because we have record North American snow cover currently. Heads up, Japan. Guys, this is Yuki Z's coverage of Cinnabon, and it is amazing. So I'm going to let this parse up here, and we'll get right back to it before the end of the video. But that is, it's a slow 18 minutes of an eruption. The eruption lasts over 15 minutes long, and this is just a small VEI-4-5. But it's 18 minutes of... Con uh, if you think man is causing global warming because of the particulates and the carbon dioxide, I wonder why this volcano is going to be causing global cooling. So if you don't, haven't supported Yuki Z yet, get over to her channel because she has the best coverage. She has a multi-volcano live stream up 24 hours a day. She works really hard at this. I hope she's a she. <laughs> But just amazing footage of the volcano, and it takes forever. Now look down here in the, in the box. It goes on and on, and boom, and more boom. So if you want to watch the whole time lapse on the best coverage here, look at it over here. Look at this. It looks like hundreds of volcanoes going off. It's terrifying. Heads up to the long version. Just let that run through for a couple more seconds. It's worth it. You'll get links to that. Thank you, Yuki Z. Give it a thumbs up. Quake Swarm continues to rattle the East Bay residents. This woman has got a Smarmy looking smirk there. Three magnitude earthquake. That's you, Christian. What's going on? Are you packing your bags? Danville, the ground near Danville's Monte Vista High School continued to rumble early Tuesday evening as the region was struck by another small earthquake, 2.8 magnitude. The latest quake happened about 6.16 p.m. in the same area as four tremblers that rattled the area earlier Tuesday morning. You're hedging your bets in this region. This slow slip has been occurring for years and the reality of a 6.8 or greater happening is above 80% now. And every day you're there, that's increasing the probability of a 7.0 or greater. So I'll leave you links to this. If you can get out of the Bay Area or any along the San Andreas and Haywood Falls, all up Cascadia, you should be planning. Now, the fear-mongering about Yellowstone, really not necessary. A swarm of just 200 earthquakes has hit the area, and here's what that means. It doesn't mean anything, because earlier in the summer, a swarm of 4,600 up to 4.6 magnitude occurred, and nothing happened then. Guys, if you didn't know, this is one of the most volcanically active areas in the entire globe as far as geothermal activity is concerned, which is why it's a national park, and millions of people flock there annually to go smell the farts in the mud pits. 
So you need to expect one to 3,000 quakes annually simply for the adjustment of hydrothermal fluids and the adjusting magma in the subsurface. And you can see an example of the adjusting magma in the subsurface in this picture coming from the University of Utah seismograph stations. This is the seismic storm in gray uh, from the summer where there were 4,600 quakes up to 4.4 magnitude. Here's the main center. And now you can see the seismic swarm that's occurring now in red. Much less uh, severe and nothing happened during this swarm. So you can see the activity in Yellowstone is moving south, but that does not mean anything. This is normal activity. So seismic swarms occur in Yellowstone all the time, and this one doesn't look per particularly interesting. So no need to fear monger. Anyone fear mongering about this is simply doing it for, uh, to instill fear for no reason. There's nothing unusual happening in Yellowstone. We have a moderate uptick here in the Chilean area, which sh should give us pause for maybe a large quake happening in that region. And we're waiting for a large quake to happen in this region. So we can even come over to Yellowstone here. I can see a quake over here. It's just happening. 2.7 northeast of West Yellowstone. And that's not at all that fantastic. Some aftershocks, but again, this is not uh, an unexpected amount of activity. Normal Yellowstone activity. We should be worried about activity on, in Indonesia because of the amount of particulates being pumped in the atmosphere here to these volcanoes. So we should really be worried about any... Uh, activity happening here and new volcanoes erupting in a large scale which doesn't seem to be happening real quick before we close defying climate change southeast u.s is getting colder instead of warmer via the polar vortex notice how they removed the warming hole because it was so stupid they probably felt like idiots because a warming hole that causes cooling is stupid <laughs> you really even can't sound that legitimate but here's another nonsense article about the Arctic getting so warm that the southern latitudes are cooling, but I just showed you record ice thickness in the Arctic Ocean. And these areas that are in purple are minus 40. So it's minus 15 over the Arctic Circle and minus 40 in Siberia. Now, there's no melting going on up there. Just nonsense. Quick look at space weather before we leave. And we've been in KP0 for nine hours. Which means that we could have an uptick in uh, seismic activity here. But real quick, look, take a look at this. The density is spiking as the phi angle shifts. So we might be coupling with the coronal hole again. So we have a massive coronal hole, which I cannot show you because there's no visual here. But we need to be watching this. But KP0, let's talk about it. It's high cosmic ray flux risk here down in this area, guys. When the KP, here's the KP range, gets to zero. And I'll leave you links to the geomagnetic score index as it relates to human health. And you can see when cosmic ray flux is over nine hours, you have, you're at a risk for acute myocardial infarction if you're at heart risk. Cerebral stroke, terminal arrhythmia, anxiety, stress, emotional instability, cognitive diminution, uptick in traffic accidents and work injuries. Heads up, Brett. Brent Stone up in AB, Alberta. <coughs> Suicide risk, mental disorder, flare-ups, radiation risk, enhanced alert for those in ventricular dysfunction or ischemic cardiomyopathy. For airline passengers in high latitudes, stay away from the Arctic flights. And there's more. The CIA studied the impact of space storms on psychic powers. And the first part of the agency's 800 plus 
page risk report contents that decrease in geomagnetic activity causes an increase in death-related telepathy, I will link you to. Check it out. Geomagnetic factors in spontaneous, subjective, telepathic, precognitive, and postmortem experiences. Boom! Whew. The government's known. It's all in here. Come down here. This is the responsive document page index from the CIA, and you can peruse it. And this is the final response to the 8th of May 2015 FOIA request. And this guy got it, man. He's our hero. So come suck it up. The geomagnetic factors and spontaneous subjective, subjective telepathic precognition and postmortem experiences. KP0 equals telepathy. It also equals near-death experiences and so many other things coming out in this document. So please... Dig in. There's a lot to learn. If your eyes are open and there is no fear involved, then you better be digging because everything you know is a lie. Typically, it's opposite of what you know. Now, how to find land for living off grid and where you want to go. Here's a great article and I'm going to leave it to you. How to find the right land for what you want to do. Where's the water? Natural building materials on site. Practicality over price, location, location, location. Stay away from the volcanoes and the shorelines. How's the sun profile? Needs to be 100% because the sun is going to be weakening. So even if it goes to 75% you're a 100 zone, you'd be good. So check out where you're living. You also need tons of wood. And it's good to have your own sand and gravel. Black soil. Lots of considerations. Resources are the most important. And if they're close to you, it saves time. And it could be the difference between surviving and struggling. So spend some time on this article. And, and real quick, I'm going to leave you some important information. This map here, it's called the Pockets of Freedom Map. The areas in green are areas where you can pretty much do anything you want on your land including building monolithic domes, <coughs> repurposing your gray, repurposing your gray water. You know, these are the areas you can easily live off grid and not get hassled and they're diminishing quickly. And there's very few areas that are in a safe area to actually live. The areas in red are areas that you can easily build earth ships and other alternative construction if you follow 2006 building codes and you just ask some questions ahead of time. This is where we are. So they have no problem with okaying straw bale and monolithic domes and earth ships in this area. But you just need to do your homework and hire an engineer to get the the drawing signed off on. So that's as difficult as it, as it is in the red areas. So I'll leave you links to this. This is a very high resolution map so you can zoom in on the states and see the counties involved. So you won't be left in the dark. This is a way to find the pockets of freedom here in Coconino County. Here we have La, Pod, La Plata and Archuleta. Conejos. So this map is very useful for those that are properly planning to prevent piss poor performance in the future. And you're welcome. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. There are places you can go to survive and thrive. There are places you can go to easily build the alternative construction that you want so that your homestead can thrive in a time of chaos which is soon coming and is unfolding before your very eyes be safe everybody